Hi, I'm Charles Strong III of Strong Counseling Solutions, LLC. We offer PLPC supervision and counseling on-site in Gretna, Louisiana or online throughout Louisiana. Um, I want to talk to you about three types of life and how to ascend, per Brandon Burchard. Uh, Brendan has a podcast called The Charged Life, and he's written a number of books, and the one we're going to be referencing today is called High Performance Habits, How Extraordinary People Will Become That Way. So Brendan had a, um, his life flashing before his eyes, essentially, and he asked himself if he was ready in the event that he didn't come back from this. So he asked himself three questions. Did I live, did I love, and did I matter? Now, these questions, I mean, you can spend loads of time on, but we're going to just get into the first one. So did I live? So how do you even qualify that? Brendan saw three different paradigms uh, as a way to explain this. So there is the caged life, the comfortable life, and the charged life. So the caged life isn't really where you want to be. There's depression, there's anxiety, there's frustration trapped in your beliefs. The comfortable life is where we find ourselves, a lot of us find ourselves. Um, things are going well, we're independent, we're meeting our goals, we're comfortable. But you find yourself saying in response to, uh, how's work, how are things going, uh, how's the family? It's fine. It's okay. These sorts of lukewarm responses aren't aren't what he wanted for himself. So he looked past that. Um, he looked at what he called the charged life. And in this life, some of the hallmarks are excitement at what you're doing, about what you're doing. There's there's a vibrant life, higher levels of empowerment. You're not just passionate about what you do, but you're obsessed. So this this kind of jump-started a, a, a real uh, niche for him. Um, he started to look into a bunch of higher performers through all walks of life. Um, and he interviewed about 300 of them to see um, what's important to them, what sort of questions they ask themselves, what sort of habits they have to do well and to continue to do well. Um, so this one uh, gold medal sprinter uh, he interviewed, uh, he wanted to see what was going on behind the scenes in the person's mind just before the gun goes off. Um, and he was trying to figure out how to tell which person lined up is the one to bet on, you know? Um, and he found that the one who's running and saying to himself before the gun goes off, I'm going to do this for my mom, that's the guy you want to hone in on because that's one of these four components that we're going to talk about that are habits of high performers that are generalized across these 300 interviews that he did. So the first component is identity. Why is it important to who I am to do well? That's a question that these high performers ask themselves. It makes them up. It, it, it feeds who they are to not only do well, but to continuously succeed and excel. Another one, uh, another habit is obsession. Um, why do I love this thing so much, even when it's hard? So we're going to hit those walls in life. We're going to hit those challenges, and we get discouraged a lot. Um, but I mean, these high performers, they're constantly defining why they do what they do, despite how difficult it is. For the third component, uh, social duty, that's that mom uh, question uh, we noted earlier. Who needs me right now to be on my A game to do well? So it's not entirely intrinsic. Um, they have these external factors um, that kind of take away the option of failing, take away that possibility. They need to do well. They need to succeed uh, and excel because someone's going to take their place if they don't. They're not going to be able to put food on the table. They're not going to be able to afford these things that they've built for themselves if they don't do well and continue to do well. And the fourth habit, deadline. Why is it important that I do well at this now? Now, these four tenets, these four behaviors, um, like I said, were generalized across 
these 300 or so interviews that he did. It's not just sports, it's not just business, but these are things that were always behind the person's eyes, in the person's mind, always playing over and over, um, keeping them on track and succeeding. And hopefully um, you'll be able to borrow from this, from these findings, and apply them to your life, whether you're in the caged life or the comfortable life, or maybe you're in the charged life and you want to just kind of validate what you're doing or see how it checks against your own experience. So uh, hopefully there was something um, illuminating or at least entertaining uh, from the discussion today. So again, I'm Charles from StrongCounselingSolutions.com, and uh, be well.